What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at a little hack to add descriptions to gallery sections, as well as the titles. And with this hack, we'll also be able to use any heading size for our gallery titles. So I'm here in my 7.1 site, and right now I just have a page with all of the different heading sizes listed out, and then they're how you would target them in CSS. So we don't have to worry about that too much right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a gallery section below this. And I'm just gonna choose this normal like grid gallery. And in 7.1, we have different gallery options. So if you edit the sections, you can see all of the different gallery types, but I like the grid simple for having like a, a title and description below the image. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and add a title. So I'll say this is my title and I'll hit close. And now if we go back and turn on the captions by editing the section, then we can now see that this is my title down below. Now, the problem that we face uh, and kind of the solution that uh, this method presents um, is this is just a fixed pixel value that Squarespace is setting on the caption. So it's giving all captions just a font size of 14 pixels. So if we wanted to set a different font size, uh, we could do that. We could target uh, the gallery section, gallery caption P, and we can set our font size to something else. But the problem is Squarespace doesn't use just explicit pixel font sizes for their fonts. In 7.1, they've moved to a much more responsive type of uh, font sizing. So like if we go to the normal paragraph tag, for example, they're not just setting it in a pixel value, you can see the font size for the paragraphs is actually this calc function that's multiplying 1.2 times one rem. And if we go down to the mobile view, it changes. So now if we go right click on the normal paragraph size, you can see that it's now moved to this new calc function where it's actually um, doing 1.2 minus one times 1.2 view viewport height units plus another rem. Just setting uh, an explicit pixel value of 14 pixels, this won't ever match any of our other paragraph settings on our website. So my method that I'm about to show you is all about achieving consistency in our titles and descriptions that we're gonna be adding. And that's the benefit of this method is that um, we're not just gonna set an explicit font size, we're gonna make sure that this font inherits the settings that we've already set up for all of our different heading styles. So I'm gonna show you, um, well first let's actually jump into the structure. So the way that uh, the Squarespace CMS works is we have that, when we edit our image, we have that blank caption field. And so I inserted this as my title. And what it does is it just injects whatever words I put in that field, it injects it into this paragraph tag. So if I stretch this out all the way, Squarespace for that field, they have an opening paragraph tag here, and you can see it has this class of gallery caption content, and then pre-fade and fade in because I have animations turned on for the site. Um, and then we have the words that were I put in the field that were injected in there, and then they have a closing paragraph. But what we can do instead is um, we can just not put anything. Well, we can close the paragraph tag and then we can open a new paragraph tag. And basically that will make Squarespace happy. Like <laughs> basically that's a way of just putting nothing there. Um, so here, let me show you. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this and I'll hop out a mobile view. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll put a closing paragraph tag and then I'll put an opening paragraph tag. And I think that'll better illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, so if I save that, we can now see that, you know, there's no caption down below, but the HTML structure will have changed for the caption. So for the gallery caption, um, we now have in the gallery caption, we have basically two blank paragraphs. So we have the opening one that we closed and then we opened a new paragraph. And then uh, this is the Squarespace closing paragraph tag that was already there. And uh, so now we just have two blank paragraphs. But what we can do is we can start writing HTML in, in that uh, field now, in that uh, caption injection field. 
So if I go and edit this, um, I can now go back to my gallery caption and I'll just come between here and now I can write any HTML that I want. So let's say I wanna make this an H3 heading and I'll say this is my title. And then I can, every time you open a tag in HTML, you have to close it. So I have my opening and my closing H3 titles. So now if I close it and I hit save, you can see that my title size here is matching my title size up here. So I haven't had to set any explicit font sizes or anything like that because uh, we're just using this HTML heading that we injected into the uh, caption window. We now uh, have our H3 inheriting the font size that Squarespace already set up. So um, I, that's how you would do a heading and you can do any heading size. So you can do an H1 heading, H2 heading, H3 heading, or H4 heading. The H3 heading is a little bit big for me, so I'm gonna go with an H4 heading. Uh, and now for the description down below, Squarespace uh, uses classes added to the paragraph tags to denote whether it's a paragraph one or a paragraph three. And if there's no extra class added, then uh, the normal paragraphs just get the normal font size. So if I right click on this paragraph, which is a paragraph one, we'll see that it is a paragraph tag that has a class of sqsrte-large. And this class is what gives it its larger font size. So here we have SQS RTE large, and it has this custom calc function font size. So if we wanted to make our, um, our paragraph here below, if we wanted to make it this larger title size, we have to give it a class of SQS RTE large. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drop down below and I'm gonna show you why we can't use a paragraph tag here. So I'll open a paragraph tag with a class uh, and I need to make sure I have a space there. So my class is gonna equal, uh, and I don't want the period, it's gonna equal SQS RTE large. And I'll make sure I add my closing quotation mark. And now this is my description. And then you have to close every tag that you open. So I'm adding my closing paragraph tag. Okay, so in theory, this should then make this paragraph description that I've added, it should make it this font size, but you can see it's not. It's still showing up small in the original font size. And that's because Squarespace has written CSS to explicitly set that font size, if you'll remember, to 14 pixels. So because they're using two different classes and also the, they're targeting the paragraph by its element type, this has a much higher specificity than this. the way that Squarespace makes the uh, paragraph one font size, which is just by the class of SQSRTE large. So basically, if we want to inherit this large font style, we can't have this be a paragraph because Squarespace is automatically gonna make it 14 pixels. But we can, instead of having it be a paragraph, we can instead make it a span. And span are, a span is just an empty like HTML element. Um, so we can do, whoops, we can change this into a span instead of a paragraph. And immediately you'll see that it works. So now it's no longer a paragraph that Squarespace can override with the 14 pixels. It's now uh, getting that font styling from that SQS RTE large. And here you can see it's applying. Perfect. And it matches our large paragraph up here. So this is how we can add kind of consistency throughout the font sizes um, by just tricking the CMS into uh, letting us add our own HTML. Um, okay, so we have a problem before I go through the other examples. We have a bit of a problem here where there's just way too much space. And that's because um, elements by default, text elements in Squarespace, uh, they have margin on the top and the bottom. So you can see there's two rem of margin on the top and the bottom. And when I hover over it, you can see how much space that margin takes up. So what we wanna do is uh, we'll basically just target everything in this gallery caption wrapper. 
and we'll make sure that it uh like it has a much smaller margin on the top and the bottom um so the first thing that i'll do is i'm going to go ahead and target this gallery caption wrapper and one thing that i want to notice also uh want, that i want to note is that the h4 has margin on the top and the bottom but the span doesn't because spans uh, don't get margin on the top and the bottom in html and this gallery caption content, the first paragraph, it already gets a margin of zero. So really the only extra space that we're seeing here is from the H4 and also from uh, this empty last paragraph tag here. So what I'm going to do to get rid of that margin, that extra space, is I'm going to target this gallery caption wrapper class. And again, we target classes with a period in CSS. And uh, I'm gonna target all of the children elements and make sure that they all have a margin bottom of zero. Excuse me, I'm gonna give them a margin top of zero. So that'll give all of these elements a margin top of zero. Uh, and since these, the, the first paragraph in the span already have a margin of zero, um, it's really all it's gonna do is affect the H4 and the last paragraph tag. So the way I can select all the children is by, um, just using this combination of selectors, and then I'm gonna give it a margin top of zero. So immediately now we're jumping up, um, but there's still too much space below here, and that's because the H4 uh, still has a ton of margin on the bottom, and we can still see the margin bottom on this last paragraph element. So what I'm gonna do is now just determine a margin bottom, of let's say like five pixels um, and so now that's you know much better than the huge amount of space that there was before so you can you can make this whatever amount that you want um, but I think five pixels looks good enough for me so now this is looking much much better so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys how you would do it if you wanted to use the paragraph three and that's just changing the class from large to small so I'm gonna edit the gallery and we'll just change this from large to small and hit close and hit save. And so now you can see perfect. We have a nice heading and title here using the H4 and then using that SQS RTE small style. And the beautiful thing about it is if we change these heading sizes, these are always going to update to match. So if I go to my design site styles fonts panel and I want to change the paragraph size, for example, let's say I actually want this to be a little bit bigger than it was. When I update it here, my description that I added is also going to update because we're using the same class that Squarespace uses. So this is a nice, a really nice way to keep this. Uh, to keep the fonts consistent across the site. So a nice little hack, and uh, we also didn't have to use too much CSS either. Um, <clears throat> really all we had to do is just write this one line of CSS to decrease uh, the margin a little bit between them. So what if you wanna use a normal paragraph style? Um, there's a little bit of a different setup that we have to do. Instead, we're actually gonna wanna make this uh, well, let's see if we just get rid of this. If it'll go back to the normal size. I'll hit save. I'll inspect and our span is getting the normal font size, perfect. Awesome. So if you want it to match your normal paragraphs, go ahead and just give it a span class, uh, a span tag without any classes. And if you want to match some of these other styles, then you can add the class of SQSRTE large or SQSRTE small. Um, okay, so that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I'll give you one more look at what the HTML looks like that you're going to insert into the description field. Basically, we're closing the default uh, paragraph tag. Uh, yeah, default paragraph tag. Then we're adding whatever heading we want. We'll drop down below that and we'll add our span for our description and we'll give it whatever class we want for whatever font size we want it to be. And then you're just gonna open up the paragraph tag um, so that the default Squarespace closing tag uh, can be just an empty paragraph. So this is what it'll look like uh, and it's super easy. Like if you were to hand this off to a client, I would just explain to them kind of 
you know, this is the structure that you'll want to use. Whoops, so we can add it to another one really easily, paste it in there. This is my new title, and this is my new description. So that's what I'm doing on sites now, um, just to make sure that I keep everything consistent uh, across the site in terms of the font sizes. Okay, that was a long tutorial, but I hope you can see the benefit of adding a description to your gallery fields, and then also the benefit of doing it the way that I did it. So this is actually a, something that I teach in a new course that I'm coming out with, uh, and it's not so much about learning CSS. The course is really a collection of CSS snippets that I am using really frequently in 7.1 across the client sites that I'm building. Um, so it's not out yet, but it will be coming out soon. So if you're watching this in the future, check the link down below and see if the course is out yet. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.